Look out, footy's back. Welcome to AFLW Today, your new one-stop shop for all things AFLW. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly, for the round one season preview. As always, I'm joined by the star of the show, the person that makes me look so much better, Bryony Dawson, who's in a new jacket. Yes, I'm in a new jacket for the first time, sporting... Yeah, lovely little Levi's denim thing. I thought I'd dress up for you today, Alex. <laughs> I'm on my best denim. <laughs> I do like it. I did note on your Instagram on the weekend that you were at an event, and I was like, okay, let's see if Bryony wears the same jacket yeah. again. Yeah, no, I did. So I'm on Jacket Watch. <laughs> Welcome to Jacket Watch. Yeah. Could um, be do, you like, do you like this one? I don't mind it at all. You forgot to wear the dark T-shirt, though. Yeah, I don't have a lot. I'm like, I've kind of got like a uniform, yeah. and it's like jeans and a white T-shirt, and then I... Spruce it up. Cotton on, free shoes. for 20 bucks. Yeah, yeah, industry. That's Co- really and Cotton on sponsored the AFLW. And so. thank you so much, Cotton on, for sponsoring the AFLW. <laughs> that is that is wonderful of you. And, yeah. In big news today, we have our new best friend, Matty Collier from the Sydney Swans, joining the show. So we break down around one as the Swans take on Collingwood to open up the AFLW season. I can't wait for that. It's going to be great. But before we get into it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Follow AFL Today there. Give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you're watching the video, just follow through what the video does there. If you click all, uh, you get the notifications for every video. It's great. Also, at AFLW Today on Facebook, TikTok, X is AFLW Today AU, and then, of course, wherever you get your good podcast. I think I got the plugs done. I'm really glad that's your job and not my job. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. I know. Anyway, can you smell it? Because footy is back. Before we rip in, we got one bit of news. What's that? The AFL hate the Western Bulldogs. Oh, tell me all about it. Well, you know, the men's finals are starting next week and the uh, Western Bulldogs are opening their fancy new setup at Witten Oval. Looks Mm -hmm. awesome, by the way. The women's team playing next Friday night, first home game of the season. Like, hey, we want to have a Friday night game to show off our new awesome setup. Cool. Western Bulldogs make the finals. They're like, hey, can we not play Friday night so it doesn't clash with the dub? What do they do? Of course they do. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Western Bulldogs, you're playing Friday night. It- Are you seeing my very unsurprised face? Yeah, no, it's here? like shock mm. is just everywhere. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't like it. I will refrain from my very opinionated opinion on that one. As a side note, it just completely sucks. We're just going to roll with that. It's not great. The optics look really, really bad, mm. especially when the CEO of the AFL sort of danced around the answer last night on mm. TV. Wasn't good. Anyway. In better news, Matty Collier's interview is coming up right now as we rip into the action heading in towards Sydney versus Collingwood on Friday night. All right, AFLW today. The AFLW kicks off this Friday at the North Sydney Oval and we are welcoming in our new pal, played for the same junior football club as myself, the Uni of New South Wales East Sydney Bulldogs, played for GWS, West Coast, saw the light and came to the Sydney Swans. It's Matty Collier. Matty, welcome in. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. What a, what a random tidbit you've just slotted in there to get in something about yourself there, Alex. That's nice. It's the East Sydney Bulldogs or Uni of New South Wales Dogs just came up in the study. I'm like, hey, I started playing footy there at Trumper Park and at the Uni Oval. It's a great time. Have you got uh, yeah. good memories there, Maddie? Yeah, definitely. Well, actually, when I played there, we weren't the Bulldogs. We were the UNSW Stingrays, the women's yeah. team. So they've since converged. Um, but I like the unity. I think the one club being under the one name is good. So, but I never played at Trumper Park. That's that was a junior ground for us. So, never got those memories. <laughs> See, it's just Lol. It got pushed across to the UTS bats, and no one likes the UTS bats anyway. <laughs> yeah, See, that got the giggle. Uh, but how pumped are you this Friday, North Sydney Oval, the first game of the AFLW season up against Collingwood? You must be excited. Oh yeah. We're all so pumped, um, you know, to, to be able to open the round um, and be a team that's outside of Victoria doing it is pretty awesome. Um, I think it's a great, you know, um, nod to our fans and to the club for all of their attendance last year. Um, and the vibe at North Sydney Oval is electric. I remember I was there last year not playing, unfortunately, on the sidelines, but it was packed and, like, it just felt like it was a crowd of 30 instead of, the crowd, the smaller crowd that it was. So, yeah, we're all really excited, but, um, you know, we've still got to get through the rest of this week. Um, so kind of keeping a lid it for now, but I think, yeah, Friday's going to be awesome. And, Maddie, you must be so excited as well. As you said, you know, you spent the season on the sidelines with an ACL injury. How 
Are you feeling, I know, you know, it's a really tough slog when you have a season ending injury. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your recovery and just how pumped you are to be out there this weekend? Yeah, I mean, obviously ACL is a big one. It's um, a 12-month rehab, so there's a lot to go through that. But I think now um, now the games are coming back around, it's it's obviously a lot more exciting for myself and um, the idea that I might get to play is is a big reward for, for the long rehab. But, yeah, it was certainly challenging at times. Um, I think any athlete, uh, when they don't get to play on the weekends and do what they love, it can be really difficult, but I've also learned a lot. So just looking forward to, you know, the season ahead and that camaraderie with the girls out of the field, I think will be the bit that I've missed the most and the bit that I'm also looking forward to. So is that isolation in itself, like just you're on your own sort of doing your rehab and you're seeing the team that's gone zero and 10 the season before make this charge into finals. Was that tough just sort of being like, oh, I'm not a part of this, even though you are a part of the team and squad? Yeah, I mean, it, it can be tough. I think, to be fair, our, our club was pretty good at making sure everyone's included. Um, so our, we've worked a lot on our club culture over the last 12 to 24 months. And um, I sort of, I had those moments at times, like I definitely wanted to be the one running out there. But um, in the same breath, we, I think we did a really good job of making sure everyone was included as much as they can be. Obviously, there's going to be restrictions when you can't play or you're in rehab. But um, yeah, I think that's a good um, testament to our, our culture and, and what we stand for as a team and making sure that everyone felt comfortable and felt included, um, even if they weren't running out that day. And you talked about um, a lot of stuff that you learnt, you know, while being injured. Um, you spent some time in the coach's box last season. Is that right? What did you What did you learn in there? Did you get any uh, any goss about what happens during the game? I think there's a lot of things that I can't repeat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think um, it was funny. One day we were getting the plane back, I think, from a Melbourne game and I was, ended up sitting next to Scott and he just came up to me and was like, I always forget that you're in the coach's box. So just remember <laughs> to like filter out the things, some of the things that you hear. And I was like, that kind of goes unsaid. But no, it definitely was a great learning. And I was really, really grateful for that opportunity because um, there's so many people that would never get that opportunity. And it's yeah. such a different um, view of, of the game and, and how the coaches look at it. I think from a learning perspective, I learned a lot that there was things that the coaches really valued and you as a player – probably not so much didn't value but you weren't prioritizing at the time the, mm. the coaches tend to look a lot at the structure and the shape and the system of the game whereas you're thinking like geez don't fumble this ball and yeah. you know they always don't want the, <laughs> the mistakes in there as well but they're sort of looking holistically and so I think that was really good to experience um, because one I can relay that back to the girls and make sure we've got the priorities right. But two, just for my own learning, it's like, oh, okay, they're probably not looking at every minute detail as much yeah. as I am. Um, but, yeah, just to see how the coaching side of things operates is, is really fascinating and how all the coaches collaborate together. Um, it was really cool. Did you have a moment where you thought, geez, I've got a really good opinion or idea here. I might just, I might just put my hand up and have a crack and say, <laughs> hey, have you thought about doing this? Oh, not really. Like I think the the good thing to see was that I was on the same page with them a lot. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes there was maybe some messages where I was like, oh, I don't know if I'd say it like that. <laughs> but that, that's what they get paid to do. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but no, it was, they're, they're really good. And like Scott's a great coach. I think yeah. he's come a long way um, from, you know, he was at North Melbourne and then he was at Collingwood and, and now he's head coach here and, took us from no games in the first year to winning our first final last year. So he's awesome. And I think the, the coaching staff that we've got are great. So yeah, it was a cool experience. So you did mention that how you went from zero wins the first season to finals last year. So what's the vibe been like this preseason? Is everyone excited to be like, hell yeah, we can do this again because your draw is pretty tough this year. So it's <laughs> going to be a tough ask. Yeah. Look, I think the vibe this year, to be honest, has been um, – kind of like wiping the slate clean from last year. Like we we obviously improved a lot, but um, the competition is getting better and better every year and we're, we're definitely not um, – we don't have the wool over our eyes in terms of that um, performance growing. So for us it's just been a lot about trying to layer on things that we've already learned and to perfect things that 
um, you know, I think we saw in the practice matches that we've had this year. So we had Giants and then Hawthorne. They were two very different results. So um, we got a lot of learnings out of both of those. And, um, yeah, for us, we're just trying to focus on the process a lot. We talk a lot about just going from week to week. Um, even now we're not thinking – we're trying not to think about – um, the game on Friday and just making sure we do everything right through the week because yeah. um, we want to be really focused on the process um, and just getting those behaviours that because if you focus on the progress, the outcome takes care of itself. See, Brad Scott could learn a thing or two from this <laughs> chat. Like, see, Sydney Swans, successful, win a lot, Essendon, you know, not so much. I'm a Swans nuff, so I'll throw shade at Essendon any time I can I'm get it. And I'm Essendon, so just to give you a little, yeah. little history yeah, it makes there. Sense. So Still just, quite yeah. sore. <laughs> yeah, just drive Quite sore. Be careful with me. I'm vulnerable, mm. okay? It did come up in my research that you were a Swans fan as a kid and your journey sort of taking you from GWS to West Coast and now back to Sydney. How exciting mm. is it you just go, hey, I grew up supporting this team and this is my job. I play for the Sydney Swans. Yeah, it's it's so cool. Like I had to pinch myself a lot early days because I was bumping into people. Even Adam Goods came in the other day because of the Go Foundation yeah. and my jaw hit the floor. I was like, come on, Maddie, pull it together. Um, but it's it's unreal. Like my, my little brother's um, lullaby to get to sleep was cheer, cheer, the red and the white. So like <laughs> – We've just been fanatics for a long time and it's cool to see that evolution of obviously starting at the Giants, going west and now coming back. Um, and I feel I feel like the club itself, everything that you see on the outside is very much like that. Like the people are lovely. Um, it's just such a good culture. I've experienced nothing like it and it, that ranges from everyone you meet at the club, from people at reception to property to whoever it is. So um, it's really awesome to be a part of. But, yeah, it's funny. Like my mum, she's a mad Swans fan and she would like be lining up next to someone at Woolies and be like, did you know my daughter plays for the Swans? Oh, <laughs> so, I love that for yeah, mum. She's, she's full she, on, but she's great. Yeah. We love it. <laughs> Has she asked for finals tickets for next weekend? They're like, I, She's like, Maddie, like I know your game's important, but – can you get me a ticket at the SCG? Like they're going going at the moment. <laughs> well, she's she's got her membership sorted. She's she's a proper fan. Like yeah. she'll get. We obviously get tickets to our games, but she'll buy them any, anyway just to support. So um, yeah, you probably need to chat to her if you want a ticket. <laughs> Ticket Tech had a meltdown this morning. It wasn't great. Oh, I, I got my tickets. It's great. but Ticket Tech always has a meltdown. Yeah, it's, it's not ideal. But uh, you talked about sort of walking into Swans HQ. Uh, how has that sort of performance centre just made not just, uh, I suppose, a big difference to the program, but for you as a whole since you started out pl playing at GWS and across in the West, like the differences in, I suppose, professionalisms and setups just as footy's evolved. But to have a, what is it, like a $75 million building as your setup, yeah. like, there's got to be an advantage there somewhere. Oh, absolutely. I think um, so for context, the first year we were still at the SCG and still at the old Swans facility yep. um, and our locker room was an old um, meeting room. So the whole top level was corporate and they pretty much got sent to work from home um, so we could we had a space. And we, we got by but it was difficult, whereas now we're in this new facility Everything is at your fingertips. Um, the gym is like a massive playground. Like it is just, it's amazing. And we've got quality staff to back that up. So I think having proper facilities and um, everything that you need at your fingertips just really elevates everything. You know, you've, you've kind yeah. of got all of the tools right there in front of you um, and no reason not to, to use them, you know. So um, it definitely makes a big difference and I think, um, it's kind of, I always say it's good that we started with sort of humble beginnings at the Swans because now we know how good we've got it. Yeah. Um, and I make a point to show all the girls, <laughs> all the new girls that come in. I'm like, hey, well, can't be complaining because you should have seen our change rooms the first year. So, Have you said but back in my awesome day then. yet? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm at that age, honestly. <laughs> like they're all, I can't keep up with half of them, but I feel like I'm a lot older than what I am just because of <laughs> the lingo that they say and yeah. I have no idea what it means. Um, have you got a have you got a favorite thing about the new facilities or your favorite thing in the gym? Because I remember mm. speaking to Ruby Slasher when she went to Collingwood mm. 
And she was like fresh out of home, didn't know how to make food, did, like didn't know how to look after herself. And she's like, Can't we've got it. a chef. No, they got a chef. <laughs> like after training, we get cooked meals. And she was like, this <laughs> is awesome. And what's your most favourite thing that you got there? Oh, look, there's a few things. I feel like I should be saying something like the gym or the Pilates room or something like that. But honestly, it's probably the sleep pods. We've got a couple of. <laughs> you got um, sleep pods? That's awesome. Well, they call them sleep pods, but it's just got like a nice comfy chair in there. And, um, oh, I've, yeah, the amount of times I've fallen asleep on a lunch break in there, it's just great. It's just a little quiet room that you can get away. That's but awesome. But the whole facility is great. Yeah, it's it's got everything you need, so. Um, I was going to say the coffee it. machines. I've seen players like trying to make coffee art and I'm going to be honest, it hasn't been great. Yeah. But free coffee, that's a big bonus. Free coffee is yeah. good. Uh, with that, is there any sort of crossover with the men's program given you're in that facility? And if there is, is there anyone that you sort of lean on for advice or do some of the players come across and sort of point things out and just sort of try to help because it is one big club at the end of the day? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, in my experience, the Swans have done that the best. I think the way that the uh, facility is designed, there's a lot of crossover. So we're always running into the boys, whether it's at the coffee machine or down in the gym. Um, and they are so giving with their time. Like they are awesome, particularly Dane Ramp, who comes to mind. Um, he, a good, he loves to chat. A good dog boy as well, like, let's be honest. Yes, yes, dogs, that must be it. Um, no, but he he's awesome and um, I often see him having a chat to the girls and that he's made a point to say that if you have any questions, like ask the guys because they want to help and, you know, mm. they want to help the younger players and they see it the same way that they want to help us too. So, yeah, we're, we're chatting to all of them. Um, they're really great. Um, and, yeah, I think it, it makes a difference, like to feel really included in the club, not just like a little tack on the end. Um, and. I can't fault them in that. They've been awesome. That's great. I love that, that the fact that it's all sort of combined. I saw, I think it was the first game last year, all the men were celebrating like they yeah. won the final when they yeah. beat the Giants in that first game. So that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm. If we can that's talk awesome. about the game yeah. this weekend, my mm. first question, um, Ali Morfitt, what's happening? Is she going to get a game? She wasn't in either of the Pracky matches. She's pretty yeah. instrumental to your setup. Can you... Can you give us a hot tip? Can you get us uh, AFL Today exclusive? Um, yeah, I think she might be a test to play. I can't remember the latest with her, but, um, yeah, she's had a few um, few difficulties this preseason mm. with injury. So I don't actually know, but I think she might be a test. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Okay, so that's the seriousness out of the way. We got tight lipped yeah. swans. Okay, it's good. Give nothing away. <laughs> I love it. You've done well. You've bounced <laughs> yeah. that one a little. Yeah. yeah. But cool. let's get to the fun stuff. Who is the most annoying person in the Swans group chat? Oh, the group chat. Um, yeah, that must light up sometimes, yeah. that thing. Oh, I thought you were just going to say in person because that's an easy one, but well, the then chat. I was going to roll on from the group chat to like in person planes and um, stuff like that. Oh, it's hard. It's honestly hard to say. Moy can be sometimes annoying, but like nothing really bad. <laughs> yeah. to be honest. She's, she's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> So then who's the most annoying or who would you least want to sit next to on the plane if you had to fly to Perth for a game? Oh, oh I feel like I'm throwing people under the bus. Okay, I love Alice Mitchell, but I, th I think a four-hour plane ride would be too much. <laughs> like she, Yeah, she's good in small doses and I love her to death, but, yeah, you get to a point where you just have to put headphones on or something. <laughs> See? I love that. I love that. I'm going to ask everyone that and just see if like we can get some like repeat answers throughout yeah. the season from okay. different players. So, yeah. Um, I've got one. It's a little more far-fetched. It's opposite, not like who's annoying. Yeah. This is like I'm going to give you a situation. Um, mm. You're in a prison in South oh, America wow. and you got like 24 hours before they transport you and nobody knows where you are and you get one phone call for someone to come and help oh. you save the day so you get lost forever. Who on your team are you calling? And why? As soon as you said that, I was like, that's 75% of the team out immediately. <laughs> um, <laughs> Go on, unreliable in crisis. No, yeah, got just, it. Their priorities, they they probably wouldn't answer it. They'd be like, oh, it's a scam. Like, I'm not. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be hard because if that I was me, say, I'm definitely not calling anyone in their 20s. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think I would have to go my local buddy, Alana Woodward. I yeah. Think. She's rock solid. She's she's just she's got it sorted, you know. And I feel like if I was in a jam, she'd she'd have my back and she'd I'd be on the next flight out, yeah. let's be real. So yeah, probably her. That's good. Great That's answer. Sterling recommendation. Yeah. I like it. All right. <laughs> as we just sort of wrap this up, uh, how are we feeling just for the season as a whole? How far do you think the Swans can go this year uh, as compared to what this is the third season in the competition now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, look, there's no there's no limit on it. I think finals is definitely um, in contention for us. We're going to have to, um, you know, play our best as you would against everyone every year. But um I think we have another level to go based off our preseason and, and the way people have been training. So it's going to be really exciting, but we're definitely going to be super competitive and I think, um, yeah, absolutely pushing for finals. I love it. Well, we hope you are too. I think I had Swans in my top eight somewhere, didn't I? <laughs> yes, and the Swans fan may have some stresses about the draw, but that's not the matter here today. <laughs> anyway, it's that, it. <laughs> that's been Maddie Collier. Thank you for joining us today, Maddie. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Really appreciate it. Sydney versus Collingwood, Friday night, 7.15. You can watch it anywhere in Australia on KO and watch it because, you know what, footy's back. How good was that? Maddie Collier rules. She's got such a great vibe. I yeah. really enjoy her. I hope she gets a game this weekend. I can't wait to see the uh, the Swans play. Just all good people play junior footy at Uni of New South Wales. That's all I've realised <laughs> from this up, chat. Man. Let's move on. Let's move on. Come Let, on. Let's move on. Friday night, 7.15 at the North Sydney Oval. The Sydney Swans take on Collingwood to open up the AFLW season. North Sydney Oval is a sick venue because you can have tins on the hill. There's going to be families running around having a great time as well. But it's just a great hang. You're such an old school footy guy. You can have tins on the hill. That's bloody great, isn't it? Hey, yeah. I just like footy. Yeah, I know if you do. I a, know you do. If I could yeah, have a tins beer, on the hill. beer and enjoy myself, it's great. Yeah. The new Sydney Metro is open. The crowd will be absolutely pumping. I can't wait. So two, these teams have played each other twice. Mm-hmm. One and one. The Swans won the last game by 19 points. The stats guy's done some stats for us, which is great. So in 2023, the Swans were the fifth best offense in the competition. Their defense was the 13th. Collingwood, on the flip side, were the 13th best offense and the ninth best defense, which summed up their season as they just missed the finals. Mm. We did ask Maddie Collier, be like, hey, um, Ali Morford, what's what's the go here? Gave us nothing. Yeah, she gave us absolutely donuts on that one. I was a little bit disappointed. I thought we might have tripped her up for a little bit and got the got the low down, but we didn't. They're, the players are very well media trained these days. No scoops. Yeah. They um they definitely need her. Yes. Um, and I hope, yeah, I hope she's back from that injury and 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 not having the niggles. So um, yeah, I'm really excited um that it's at North Sydney Oval for the opener. Um the fans absolutely love it up there, and that's why they've got the season opener. Yeah. Um, because you know, we are trying to hit those metrics and those targets for the AFLW with numbers and that kind of thing. So yeah, I think it's I think this is the right decision. I think it's gonna be an absolute ripper game. I'm just gonna put it out there. Every season, just open it up at North. Sydney Oval. I reckon that's, you know, how we've got uh, Melbourne and Richmond, uh, no, Carlton and Richmond, sorry. I reckon yep. do that every year, North Sydney Oval. Sydney. If it's Sydney and Collingwood, so be it. Sydney versus someone. Uh, I do have a, I've got stats here. Okay. So me. in 2023, the Swans averaged the highest crowds across the home and away season with 4,637, more than 2,000 higher than the league's average. That's fantastic. So there you go. That's the, 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 what do they say? The the proof is in the pudding or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Good stuff. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so Thanks, I'll be, I'll be out now. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> uh, watching the team news here for Collingwood as well, Brianna Davey is questionable and Lauren Butler isn't playing, which is a worry for this defense of Collingwood uh, that wasn't that great last year. They gave up about 40 points a game, but they were only scoring about five goals a game as well and 33 points. So what are we thinking here? Because there's a lot of concerns with what's been going on behind the scenes at Collingwood leading yep. into the season. Obviously, Ruby's back. They've got a new coach, and it's just like, play the kids. Let's see what happens. Like, yeah. What are we feeling? It they- does feel a little bit like it's a play the kids and see what happens. Like, you know, they had the two heavy losses in the preseason, mm. uh, l- the injuries that you said, and now Morris Dalton is out with the back injury as well. She's got Remos coming in as a great sub for her, um, and uh, Imogen uh, Barnett is going to be a great target down forward as well. Um, I think we might see uh, Sabrina Fredrickson yeah. um, head down into the 
forward line to help anchor that as well. But I think another thing that we're going to see is a lot of mids having a crack at goal. Yeah, I like this because uh, we saw Chloe Malloy last year bomb one from long range. You've got Montana Ham in there. Uh, Privatelli's back, of course. Hopefully our, our new best friend, Maddie Collier, does mm-hmm. get picked to play, yep. return from her ACL. And if Ali Morfitt plays, I think that's what tips the ledger in the Swans' favour here. And that answers the big question is, can the Swans catch out Collingwood on the run here? Because I know the Swans are the favourites, but you still feel that the Swans need to prove themselves. I I honestly think that the Swans are going to run over Collingwood. I like it. Yeah. I like this. I really do. They, um, I think last season was a really big confidence builder for them. Yeah. And I just feel like there's just a lot going on for Collingwood yeah. at the moment. Um, I do want them to be really good. I love that team. I love the players um, down there, but I really think that – um, Sydney's going to be a little too strong for them. And also, um, you know, Sydney, Sydney will be wanting to get those wins on the board early because yeah. the rest of their season looks horrific. Yeah, we mentioned the draw. <laughs> the, the Swans have got to play six of the eight finalists from last year. And, of course, as a reminder, they are the finalists themselves. So they're playing yep. six of the seven. Not ideal. I think uh, I'm looking forward to seeing Montana Ham go ham in this game. And just get a bunch of the footy. This is this is her year. Like yep. I, I know she's already a very well known name around, but I think this is the year where she really steps up and we see we see massive, massive improvements. Maybe all Australian. Ooh, so tip. Swans? Yes, absolutely. Swans by three goals. I've got swans by uh ten points. Okay, I like it. Move across to the West, Left Lane Park over in Perth. There's a West Coast host, Richmond. You know what the AFLW doing? No overlap. Great start. Head to head, the Tigers are three and zip against West Coast. That's no real surprise. Last year, the Eagles' offense was the worst in the comp. They averaged just over four goals a game, and they leaked 53 points a game in 15th. The Tigers summed up their season. Tenth best off offense and eighth best defense. This is the Hosking Bowl. It is the, the Hosking Bowl. <laughs> Got Jess and Sarah taking each other on, but they may not end up playing on each other, but it is the Hosking Bowl. Indeed. And, and of course, we do have the first game for Daisy Pierce, who in an interview she did with Channel 7, I've done my research, bit of confidence, but says process driven, this is going to be a journey. So yeah. kind of saying we're not going to be great. That's a very Daisy Pierce answer. It was a great coach's yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah, it was well done. Um, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see uh, the Hoskins play against each other. They hit um, each other that little bit harder, don't they? Yeah, I reckon they do, but they're also besties. So yeah. before um, Jess moved away, um, they hadn't spent more than like three and a half weeks apart. <sighs> like they've got like the real yeah. twins twins um, thing going on. So, um, yeah, and I'm hoping Jess is going to play. I think she's niggling, uh, got a little uh, niggling injury as yeah. well. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited to watch them. So uh, Daisy Pierce in that interview said their first draft pick, Jess Wrench, will debut as well as San Barker, who was a injury pickup as well and just said, killed it in the preseason. Great. Got a player. Yeah, great. So I like it here, but the big question is, can Richmond start the season strong or is this just the earliest banana peel of all time? I really, I love that you've got that as the big question. Yeah. Is is it the banana peel? Because <sighs> you look back at the end of the season and go, remember when Richmond lost to West Coast and they missed finals? <sighs> yeah, I do. <sighs> My whole thing with Richmond, yep. and I've said this to you before, this list should be performing better on paper than what it is. Yep. Um, we haven't even mentioned Mon Conti could have 57 disposals as well. You know what? I wouldn't put it past her. I reckon she's, <laughs> I reckon she's got it in her. 57 disposals, Mon Conti. That's my big call uh, for the game. Um, obviously not great with Montana McKinnon um, out with the ACL. Mm-hmm. I think they had pretty pretty high hopes for her. Um but yeah, I think I think they're going to rip through the Eagles. Yeah, uh, for me, tips and margin. I think Richmond four goals. I had Richmond by four goals. Oh, I like it. This Look is at one, this. We didn't hey? even put it on the run sheet. Just running off the same Stop. same hymn sheet. Saturday, heading to Canberra, Monica Oval as GWS take on the Western Bulldogs head to head. The dogs are three and two. The dogs won the last meeting by seven. Both teams were not good last year. 15th ranked offense and 18th ranked defense for the Giants, while the Dogs were 14th and 17th. This is going to be, uh, this is going to sound horrendous, but it is true. I think this might be the high point of the season for one of these teams. Ooh. <laughs> I don't have high hopes for either it's, team coming into the season. Oh, I know. It's harsh, but it's fair. But one of them, are, at least one of them will win a game. And that's, 
Hopefully, if it's a draw, dear God. Yeah. Uh, Zali Goldsworthy is the one I'm just looking forward to here. Yep. Rising star last year. Yeah. She plays well. Giants yep. will win this game. That's as far as I'm concerned because we said it in our season preview that we weren't really – we weren't feeling the dogs at all. We were we were concerned. They're going through a complete overhaul at the moment. It's like Ellie Blackburn is like, ah, I'm trying, guys. Help yeah. me out. Yeah. And it's play. This is the literal play of the kids. Yeah, I think it's going to be a really tough hit out for both clubs. Um, you know, the dogs turned over like a third of their their list last yeah. season and lost massive key players. Um, Lelawifi's out with the ACL. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be really tough for them yeah. to get over the line, the doggies. Um, I reckon GWS. Their preseason form was horrendous. <sighs> I don't mind them. You don't? I don't mind them. No, at least Eva, Zali Goldsworthy, as you said, Izzy Huntington, um, Hanin, Zrika, like And Evans out of defense as well. Yeah, there's some, there's some really good options. For me, it's going to be about them just stringing together good basic footy. Yeah. They're not going to have to do much to get over the dogs, but if they can do what this team has the capability of doing, then yeah. I think that they will they'll get over. Okay, I'm tipping the Giants by 2 points with no confidence whatsoever. GWS by 7 points. Ooh, okay. Can I ask another question on top of that? Yeah. What do you think the actual score of each team is going to be? <sighs> I'll be shocked if both teams break 30. Mm. Yeah, I think it's going to be a messy, it's, scrappy it's little game. It's also Canberra of and the win can get up there too. So that's uh, we we talk about like we saw the conditions and it's funny Western Bulldogs and GWS in the men's last weekend. We talk about the conditions in that game. Yeah, how usually they're like, oh, we're not accustomed to this because they're playing at these big stadiums that don't have the big wind bowls and Marvel Stadium with the roof. The conditions that the AFLW players <laughs> are facing week in week out. And people, oh, you don't score as many points. Yeah, dude, try and play in raining sideways, snow and sleet. Yeah. it's. Have you ever been down to Casey Fields? I've been to no. Cranbourne. I used to work in Cranbourne. Did you? Yeah, I hated it. I was, yeah. I was honestly <laughs> depressed working there. Most people are in Cranbourne. Yeah. Hello to all of our friends in Cranbourne. Um, lovely to see you down there. We'll see you at Casey Fields every now and again. <laughs> but, but that's what I mean. Like The conditions are tougher, therefore the scoring is not going to be higher. Yeah. But as we see the evolution of the game, it's going to get better. But for yeah. these two teams who are, you know, down towards the lower end of the table, yeah. I think if the, if it, it could be five goals to four and yeah. that's a good result. Yeah. Essendon take on Fremantle at Windy Hill, 3.05 on Saturday afternoon. The Bombers are one and zip against the Dockers. They won the last meeting by 20. Uh, last year, Essendon, they were the 11th ranked offense. They were the seventh best defense. Frio, their offense was horrendous. 28 points a game and they gave up 40 points a game as well. Bonnie Toogood was best on ground last time they met. Absolutely tore this game to shreds. It leads straight into the big question. Is this the season where she becomes the best player in the league? I love your passion for Bonnie Toogood. I think it's- She hates stats guy. That's why. <laughs> I think it's 50% her last name. Yeah. I reckon you like saying that a yeah, lot. it's a great name. Yeah, it's a but, great name. But also yeah. like Bonnie Toogood, like it was Jessica. Be like, ah. <laughs> and hello to all the Jessicas out there. Love and respect for you. Yes. Uh, what is it about her? What do you like? Because I, I barrack for Essendon. Yeah. I know Bonnie. I've worked with Bonnie. I love Bonnie. So the, we did a, if you check out the AFLW Today socials, you will see clips over the coming weeks of a content shoot we do with ASICS athletes. Uh, Bonnie was a part of that and within 30 seconds understood the assignment as to what we were doing. Great, great person, great hang, but also great skills. Just great skills. And then also from watching the from watching games in the past as well going, Whoever that is is awesome. Like as I was learning, learning, learning the players and learning yeah. the AFLW. Like, yeah. Oh, Bonnie too good, and it's one of those names that sticks in the back. Yet it's like how you got a Jazzy Garner or a Chloe Malloy. It's like yeah. one of those names you sort of attach yourselves yeah. early to. And it's like I just want to watch them play footy because they rule. Yeah. And it's pretty much that. Great. And then also that happened. I just hate that she plays for Essendon. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bonnie. I hate Essendon. I love that you play for Essendon, Bonnie. Thank you. But so Eliza Riley last week was really high on Fremantle, thinking that there's. Some good talent. We've got Gabby Newton coming across there. They had a bunch of injuries the last couple of years and no Kiara Bowers, of course, yep. who's pregnant. So if they have a fit list, they can give this a shake. But is it because it's in Melbourne, the lean is to Essendon? <sighs> yeah. Look, I think so. Like it, it is always harder for teams to travel. Um, I also think, um, 
Yeah, it's great having Gab Newton in for Fremantle. Ash Brazel as well. She's going to be um, so incredible for them. Um, but Essendon's list looks really, really good. You got Paige Scott, Maddie Press Barkers, Bonnie Too Good, Georgia G, Darista Bannister. Um, you got um, you know, Bess Keeney coming in, you got Maddie Gay. Um, great athleticism, great speed, great depth. I think the only thing for Essendon um is the fitness on um, Sophie Vanderheuvel and Brooke Brown, who yep. are, have both got those soft tissue injuries. Um, is, In a short season, that's really hard. It's it, The short season, it, it gets every team, and this goes across the board. The teams who can stay injury-free or have – nobody's going to be injury-free, yep. but have the least amount of injuries, that's where you're really going to be able to, um, you know, excel and, and get your team across the line. Yeah. How are you feeling about your Bombers? I've got the Bombers by four points. I got them by four goals. I reckon, Do I, you? I reckon this is a comfortable. This is that sort of them just going, we're very good. Or it could just be yes and we're good in the first month and then just fall off the cliff. How dare you? I've got to, I've got to just How continue dare on. You? Yeah. But Essendon by four goals. So I, I actually, we'll all be out there. I can't wait for this game. You're working. Yes, I'm working there. I'll yeah. be on the boundary having a chat, like a little, the football version of an ambulance chaser. Yeah. It's great. I love yeah. it. Oh, there's another injury, guys. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, I love it out there, yeah. especially at Windy Hill. I grew up there, out there supporting the Bombers, and it's just, yeah, I love it. All right, let's go to People's First Stadium, 5.05 p.m. The Gold Coast Suns last year finalists take on the St Kilda Saints. One and one in the head-to-head -head meeting. Suns won the last game by two goals. Both of these teams were quite good last year on offense and defense. The Suns were seventh and sixth. St Kilda were eighth and ninth. This could be one of the games of the weekend. Aside from the grand final rematch, I think I'm looking for Of course, the Swans. I love the Swans. But I think I'm looking forward to this game the most. Tell me why. Because I think both of these teams have something about them. It's like, hey, we might not be, you know, the, we're saying it's a big three this year. Yeah. But we can make a fist of it to be that three, four, five, six, or mm -hmm. four, five, six, sorry. And we had positive vibes about St Kilda coming up the ladder. We had yeah. Gold Coast obviously made finals last year. They look to have recruited better. They're going to be better in defense with Lynch and Wilson coming in. They had a good defense last year. So, and there's just, you know, I want to see uh, Charlie Robottom and Patrickios just go head to head and just be like, I'm going to tackle the hell out of you all night. Do we think Patrickios is going to be fit? That's the question mark. Because mm. we're recording on a Tuesday, teams come out on Thursday. So that's a big watch because I think this is where the game's going to be won is the inside mid contested footy game. Whoever wins the contested footy will win the game. And if she's not in? I think Gold Coast just steamrolls them. <laughs> I think she's that important. Gold Coast, you think she's that important? A Gold Coast are steamrolling. Uh, it goes them. from like a goal to probably three goal win. Okay. That's but, a steamroll. Three goals is a steamroll for you? Well, c considering when you say like average average points scored is 41 a game compared to 33. So if you can go from 41 to towards 60, mm -hmm. it's a bit of a bit of a kick in the head there. Okay. Great. But this is the big thing about the Saints, and this is in the big question. You know, St Kilda have only ever won two games interstate. They beat West Coast in 2021. They beat the Sydney Swans in the Sydney Swans' first ever game. So they don't travel. They are like the antithesis of what the Gold Coast are in the men's. Yeah. They go out of state, like, what is happening? Oh, I can't do this. Mm. Nikki Dow, what are you doing, mate? Do you think it has anything to do with the fact that they're the oldest team in the in the competition? Why? Well, they just because then it my old The average age is the oldest. My theory of like players being away from their beds, like, oh my back's yeah, killing. You've got to take your pillow. I travel with my pillow now. Yeah. Not that I'm an athlete, but Harry Mackay does. I saw him do it. Mm. So it's it, it's a thing. Yeah. I think I think traveling's a lot harder in AFLW than it is in the men's competition, obviously, for varying reasons. Yeah. Like the luxuries that are afforded to the men's uh, competition compared to the W so far. Oh, tell me more about that. I haven't I'm not doing that. No, I'm not. That's, that's bait. That's bait. <laughs> but how do we feel about St Kilda? Like horrendous away record, but we both think they can make finals. Yeah, I do think they can make finals. Um, and kind of what I said on the last podcast is that they've just got to be able to string together some really good footy. Yep. They've got... Um, They've got really good players in there. Jamie Lambert, Patrikios. Um, Jesse Wardlaw. Yeah. Uh, Steph Chochi, Hannah Priest. You know, it, like they've got a good team yeah. and they really just need to string it together. And if they can, I like 100% they're getting over the top. Okay. I like it. So the big question, are these two teams legit? Yeah. I, I, yes. 
Yes. I like is it. My, <laughs> is my short, sharp answer. Also, um, Renee Karras is going up against her old team as well. Um, so, so a hate game is what we're calling. Yeah, a hate game. Revenge. There you go. A revenge. revenge! <laughs> we're big on revenge games. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel, I've got both of them playing finals this year, so I think this is going to be an absolute cracker. If Patrikios is out, I do lean to Gold Coast much more heavily. Right now I've got them winning this by three points. I've got Saints by a goal. Oh, I like it. Yeah. Yes. About time we went different. Right? I like it. It's great. All right, let's get down to Taxpayer Park, a.k.a. GMHBA <laughs> Stadium in Geelong as the Cats take on the Ds. One and one at these two teams. So this will be the third time in 10 games that these two teams have played each other because they played each other in the middle of last year and then, of course, in the finals last year. In offense last year, the Cats were sixth and fourth in defense. The Demons were the best team in offense and second in defense, only allowing in 29 points a game. Still went out in straight sets in the finals. Geelong have won four of six at GMHBA. Well, that was last season. They got smashed by the Demons by 50, but they did get revenge in the semifinal. Mm. For the Ds... Big outs. There's been an exodus across the offseason. Yeah. Liv Purcell and her broken face. Shout out to Liv. Was booked to be a guest on this show, but I think her recovery is much more important than it talking is, to us morons. It is semi more important, Liv, and we wish you well. I hope yes. you're on a, a speedy recovery. Yes. And hopefully you're back from Adelaide too, because that'd suck. Uh, and no Taylor Harris for the Ds uh, with her quad. Taylor Harris is out. Been called? Uh, well, that's what I've said, seen at the moment. So if Taylor Harris is in, I've got this wrong. Thank you. <laughs> Thankfully, we're doing this before team, so it's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Ds. I mean, we talked about the Ds last week. Um, they were our biggest slider. Yep. Right? Um, and, you know, having- Their first month is tough. And it's tough. And no Taylor, if that's the case, and no Liv Purcell either. Um, I think they're going to have a really hard time um, putting their best foot forward. I think mm -hmm. there's going to be- um, there's going to be a struggle getting delivery into that forward line and, you know, losing Libby Birch as well. You know, she was just such an anchor yeah. uh, down back and uh, I think they're going to really struggle. Uh, the Cats possibly know Chloe Shear, um, so that'll be really, um, really disappointing. But, oh. What do you do with Kate Hall? Where do you play her? Do you play her at centre half forward or do you just put her on the ball to try and get the footy into the forward line? I honestly think they'll try her everywhere. Yeah. Um, and and that's one of the great things about Kate Hall. Kate Hall she's such a, a versatile player. Um, I think they'll probably try her in the centre yeah. first um, and see how that goes and then she'll head down into the yeah. forward line. And then for Geelong, uh, stats guy behind the scenes, massive fan of Kate Kenny, brings a, brings a lot of just fun and vibes, just obviously with the little, uh, what is it, the little kick to herself, the, the game. Oh, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't Love remember that. what it's called. It's yeah. great. The solo, thank you, stats guy in the background. And of course, <laughs> favorite player in non Sydney Swans division, Georgie Presparkas, the better of the Presparkas sisters. Oh, okay. Yeah, man. we're going to go there. All right. But so this is a big one for Geelong because I think this, beating the D's, yes, I think they're going to be sliders, but coming out round one at home and beating the D's, is a statement win. Yep. Also at the same time for the D's going, hey, we're still really good. So this is a massive game to kick off the season. We said that the Demons have a tough month. They've got the Cats, the Lions, and the Roos in their first three in their first three games. Yeah. They could be zero and three and done. I think also knowing a lot of those players as well, they would love hearing this com like this conversation. You've got none, D's. And being like zero and three. Yeah, everyone's gonna think we're zero and three. You know, there's there's Nothing more powerful than a team with a point to prove. Yeah. Um, because there is a lot of talk about about the D's uh, sliding. They do still have great players in there, though, yeah. as well, who know how to play good footy. There's a lot of depth and a lot of versatility um, in that team. So I don't think they're going to get rolled by the Cats, but I think it's Cats by 10 points. So the big question was, can the D's prove the knockers wrong? Okay, this moron with a mustache, which <laughs> I'm sure that'll be up on the thing is like a pin board with my face on it going, this idiot says we'll be zero and three. <laughs> Please still come on the show though. We love you. Yeah, we do. Please yeah. come on the show. Love We've that. We've just got to be impartial and give our thoughts. So you're cats by- Cats by 10. I got cats by two goals. Okay. Let's get to Albertson Oval. Port Adelaide host the Adelaide Crows in a showdown to kick off the season. This is awesome. I love a showdown. The Crows are, of course, 2-0 against the Power. They won the last meeting by 30 points. Last season, Port Adelaide were ninth in offense and 16th in defense. We said their defense wasn't great. There's proof in the pudding. The Crows were second and third in offense and defense. This should be – we could take 30 seconds on this game because Adelaide steamrolled Port Adelaide 
um, like three weeks ago. Yeah. In a preseason. What changes? Prison bars. <laughs> Prison bars. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be a really it's 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 a tough one to say anything other than Adelaide are absolutely uh, going to annihilate them. I I really love Kirsty Lamb in the midfield there, um, Abby Dowrick as well. I think I think they're really great great inclusions for the team. But um, yeah. I mean, where's the improvement from Port Adelaide's preseason coming into this? Whereas Adelaide have sort of been just going, ah, oh, yeah, we're cool vibes, just, yeah, just chilling out, waiting for the real stuff to start. I don't think they've got it. Yeah, even Sinead Goody, who's a, who's the early rising star favorite, everyone's like, watch her play football. She's going to kill it. I'm sure she's a goody. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, that, good. that was low hanging yeah, fruit. It was really easy. But there's going to be a lot of like pressure on her in her first game against this Adelaide Crows. Mm-hmm. It's just like, come on. Show us how good you are. Go on. I dare you to pick up the footy. Yeah. Not going to be a good night. I Again, it's having players who have that against them where there's a little bit of expectation. Yeah. Um, I think that's really healthy for competition and for people to get inside their own psyche yeah. and be like, But also okay. when you're a kid, you're just like, I'm unbeatable. Okay, cool. You're, <laughs> you think you're the best Adelaide team? Watch this. Like, yeah. There's that, that arrogance that young people have that when yeah. they come into like a competition like this, that's awesome. And yeah. you need to bring that in there. You need yeah. to believe in yourself. So if you don't, what are you doing? Yeah. How many goals do Anne Hatchard and Jess Waterhouse combine for in this game? Because this forward line can pile on the points. As we've seen, this defense of Port Adelaide is not good. Yeah, they're gonna they're really gonna struggle. I've got <laughs> the flying mullet will kick four. Um yeah, okay. I see that. Yeah. I'm gonna have Anne at six. Oh, wow. That's yeah. a bad night for Port Adelaide. Yeah. Um, I've got Adelaide by 12 goals. I think the Pracky. That's pack- worse than mine. Yeah. That's- I think the Pracky was just a warm up. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they're going to, Adelaide, they're going to, they're, they've got something to prove. Yeah. They're sore from last year. They'll be willing, you know, they they won't slow down on the on the slower teams. Yep. You know what I mean? They, they will absolutely annihilate them. I've got Adelaide by eight goals, so you've got 12. But the big question in this game is, why isn't this at the Adelaide Oval? Why not? It's a showdown. There's been massive crowds at the Adelaide Oval for games before. Why not? I don't have an answer without 20 minutes about why all of our games aren't at larger. <laughs> I understand some <laughs> games like being like, you know, the Swans hosting at Henson Park for their for that, but like a showdown yeah. should be at the Adelaide Oval. I absolutely agree. <sighs> what are we doing, AFL? What are we doing? Anyway, someday, Hawthorne take on Carlton in Frankston. This is your area. I've just moved back down to Frankston. I grew up there, mate. I did grow up there. Oh, that's and, where you uh, get it from. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it is where I get it from. <laughs> um, I live just around the corner from from um, Kinetic Stadium as well. So it's a, a bloody ripper place down there. Uh, if you're going to the game, head down to Vic's uh, Suvlaki place on the Penn Highway there. Get yourself a good Suvlaki <laughs> and a bucket of chips and head on over to the game because it's going to be an absolute <laughs> ripper. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the first ever meeting between these two teams. Uh Hawthorne looked to have a lot of exciting young talent and good run and carry from midfield and half back. Last year, both of these teams were not good. Hawthorne was 16th in offense, 14th in defense. Carlton were 12th and 12th. I don't know what to think of Carlton. I just think they're just like, yeah, like they're just there, but they're not, they're not bad enough to bottom out. And they're not good enough to challenge. They're the St. Kilda of the dub. They've been riddled by injury season after season. It's, and then people leave. I know. Yeah. It's, it's like Icon Park has bad vibes. Yeah. I mean, though, Carlton have always been known for their um, their really tough defensive yep. setup led by um, Karen Peterson. But um, they're missing Lola Weefy. I mean, she was huge. And Trudgen and Lee from the back line as well. Like, poor Karen's going to be like, holding up the back line all on her own. Um, I'm loving Yasmin Dersma at halfback. Yeah. Um, great running ability, versatility, great ball use. Um, for me, it was Carlton's fitness last year that okay. let them down towards the end of the season. In a short season, that's a concern if you're yeah. running out of puff. Yeah, 100%. Um, so what do you put that down to? Is that just <laughs> professionalism, not working hard enough? Like, I know that sounds harsh, but if yeah, you're running out yeah. of puff in a three-month season... I think it's probably maybe 
it doesn't get the focus that it needs to in the preseason. Okay. I think that there, if there are bigger underlying issues within the team, especially when you're getting injuries, you're focusing on that. And yes, you're always focusing on fitness, yeah. always. Um, but you can see the teams like you know Brisbane and Adelaide and North, and you know that fitness is their number one priority. Yeah. Um, you can see the massive difference between them. Um, so, yeah, I think, uh, and I have a feeling that the Carlton are going to be very similar. Um, because last year. year they faded out; they lost their last four. Yeah. So it could be something similar again. So the big question in this game is: Can Hawthorne live up to the hype? Yes, I think You're that big. they can. You know how I feel about yes. Hawthorne this season. I'm really, really excited to um, see them play, um, see how they've come together uh, under Webster. And uh, just there's been a lot of talk about um, how they're going to play the game a little bit differently. Okay. Um, lo- different style of footy, a lot of running players, really good coming out of defence. They're going to be very com- Compose a lot of short kicks, um, and then through the middle, they're just going to take off. They've got absolute power through the middle. Eliza West, Emily Bates, Jazz Fleming, Caitlin Ashmore. Um, it's going to be really executing that properly. Uh, and then you've got Casey Sheriff and Greta Bodie yeah. really need to stand up for them down forward. If Webster brings anything across from Brisbane, it's going to be fitness. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. They might run Carlton into the ground here. Uh, yeah, I think that. I think that they have the possibility to. All right, tip. I am going, what did I put down here? Hawks by 10 points. Hawks by a goal. I want to see Hawthorne do it. Like I, that's the, one of the teams I can't get a massive read on, so I want to see them do it. Before, yeah. So I don't have them in my eight, but before I start sort of believing in it. And you need to see it. Yeah. yeah. Like, like Hawthorne this year. Like yeah. I've seen I'm like, whoa. Hopefully okay. I get the same answer. Finally. To round out around one of the AFLW. I love that they've done this. 305 in Ipswich, though. I don't like that part. <laughs> 305 in Ipswich, like eh? Ipswich, really? The Brisbane Lions, the defending premiers, host the North Melbourne Kangaroos in a grand final rematch to close out round one. I love this. Head to head, the Brisbane Lions are five and zip against North. Of course, they won the grand final by 17 points. Stats guys in the corner crying. In 2023, Brisbane Lions were the third best offense and the fifth best defense. Kangaroos were the fourth best offense, but they were the best defense averaging 21 points scored against for the season. Mm. Wow. It's impressive, isn't it? That's ridiculous. Yeah, it's really good. But just what a way to kick off the season. This is great. Both teams have been fantastic in preseason. We know Brisbane are going to be ready to go. But North have put a couple of the teams to the sword in preseason. So it's like, oh, let's go. Yeah. They, I feel like they're really pumped up to start the season. <sighs> yeah, they are. I, I'm really, I'm, I really want um, the Kangaroos to get across the line um, in this game uh, just to prove to themselves just that little confidence booster and that they, they can do it and they can compete. Is that uh, a mental thing that they can't beat Brisbane? No. <sighs> I don't think it is because Brisbane's Brisbane. But it's hardly anyone can beat Brisbane. But it's five and O. Oh. Yeah. There's got to be some mental scarring there. The Kangaroos have only just gotten good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you pull in five and O oh from like, you know, back mm. in the day. Yeah. Um and yeah, I the Kangaroos are they're a, a, a much stronger team this season, and I just feel like they are going to get across yep. the line for the Lions. So you got you got Ash Riddell, Jazz Garner, just there in the midfield, just racking up touches left, right, and center. But then, of course, they come up against Brisbane. Who knows what Dakota's going to do? Could just go, hey, remember what I did at, at Icon Park? Going to do it to you again. <laughs> Dakota's one of my favorites. Yeah, I know you're a big fan, but also Kate Lutkins is back. Obviously, we don't have a team selections yet, but Brisbane just got a bevy of players to pick from because you've got Phoebe, Phoebe Monaghan, uh, who left last year. So that's like, where's the depth coming from there? Yeah. Uh, Eleanor uh, Harter, we did mention in the preseason preview, that ruck defense hybrid looks awesomely yeah. scary and weird all rolled into one. It's like, what's she going to do? And we know that players are being coached to be more versatile this mm. season as well. There's going to be, a, you know, more than one key position for a lot of people that, yep. they're, that they're going into. So that'll be really interesting as well. Big question. Is this a must win for North Melbourne? And it's round one. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
it is a must win for North Melbourne. Um, I think they need it for their confidence. Yeah. Um, they'll be really hungry uh, to get it across the line for sure. They win this, they win the flag. Oh. And it's round one and I'm calling it. Just just bank shot straight away. Round one. Flag Roos win it by two goals. That's really interesting. Yeah. I've got it the opposite way around. So you think they lose and then win the flag? I think they're not wasting their win on this game. I think they're keeping it for the final. I'm going foot to the throat. Interesting. I'm going, we're the best team in the competition. We're, we're running this now. I love this. Um, so I want North Melbourne to win. Yeah, but you're tipping Brisbane. I'm tipping Brisbane. So it's we've, we've sort of... <laughs> All the way through these games, and if people listening and watching, and hit us up in the comments as well on YouTube, get us get around us on social media as well. We've sort of glossed over a lot of like players we haven't dug deep because it's hard to get a lot of practice matches. But once the games start happening, yeah. we like next week we will have so much more to go off after yeah. seeing just one game of footy. Yeah, and that's what I think is what throughout the season we're slowly just going to be like left. Like we'll get to a point in like round number. That's going to happen. Yeah. And it's also a lot of teams learning new game styles, new coaches, new arrivals, because there's still a lot of upheaval in teams every year. A hundred percent. And, you know, it's always those first few games of every season. It's, I feel like it's always there's up in the There's a lot of air. Spider-Man gift going on here. Like, yeah. We're all doing the same yeah. thing, hoping for the best. Yeah. But especially, you know, with the the changes in, in you know, the the way people are playing the game and 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 that kind of thing. I think there's, there's a lot to get used to. Um, and we might see, you know, a few skills errors and that kind of thing early on, as you do in the men's as well. Start the season, everyone's like fit firing, but it's also the pressure. Yeah. Bring it on. Yeah. Big call for the weekend. What is your big call for round one of the AFLW? My big call is no ACL injuries. Oh, you said it. <laughs> oh, no. You said it. Yeah. Guys, look after yourself out there, please, please. The injuries are just absolutely killing me. Um, I want to see th these incredible athletes yeah. be able to take the ground every week. Please be careful. On the positive side of things, the <laughs> Bombers make a statement, come out and smack Frio and go, top four, let's go. I love it. I've got too much confidence in Essendon. I hate myself I for it. I love that you do. I really hope we win so that you can keep the confidence going. Oh, I, I will it. jump off so quickly. <laughs> keep an eye on. So this is things that we're going to sort of just pay attention to over the weekend and yep. see the permeations of it. So yep. Gold Coast and St Kilda, keep an eye on yep. that game. How West Coast go with the cheat code. We didn't mention Daisy Pierce's cheat code. We'll touch on that on next Monday's show. Daisy Pierce is the cheat code. We will see. <laughs> of course, the grand final rematch. Absolutely keep an eye yep. on Can't that. Wait. The chip technology. Yeah. Tell me more about the chip technology because it's amazing that it's coming in. Yeah. So this is more to see if the ball's been touched, if it's hit the post or if it's gone across the line completely. So, of course, at some of these grounds, we don't have the camera angles because we're in the middle of nowhere like Ipswich. So I think there's a – from what I've read, there is a guy that's like – or a girl that's at a computer just watching and will have like all the little – information from like, ah that's nah, touched it was definitely touched so it's going to be like the the soccer where they like the umpire runs yeah, yeah. up to like a screen to test <laughs> oh, it and then goes everyone waits as, and then we get a flag as a massive epl fan provided that this system works better than the var we're golden okay great so yeah we'll, we'll see how that goes because i just hope we it doesn't stuff up and we have like a game defining call ruined by the chips failing yeah okay so we'll see anyway that's all nine games done and dusted in preview this week. And big shout out to our new best friend, Matty Collier, for joining in on the show. Thanks, Matty. But that'll do us for AFL today. For, for today. We'll be, <laughs> yeah. we'll be back next Monday to wrap up uh, round one. And at this moment, I believe Jess Waterhouse is booked in to come on the show pending no injuries and everything this weekend. Jess Waterhouse will be on the show next Monday. Incredible. To talk us through all things showdown, TikTok, Ninja Creamies, and why they are my girlfriend's most favorite person on the planet, including me. Anyway, remember to smash a like across the socials to see us doing awesome stuff during the footy season. Facebook, Instagram, X, TikTok, threads apparently, and of course, YouTube. AFL Today on YouTube, AFLW Today everywhere else, AFLW Today AU on Twitter. Of course, wherever you get a good podcast, AFL Today. Subscribe and star across all of those shows, as well as Cricket Today, Football Today, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, AFL Today, which is the men's one, and hold all tickets. If you like horse racing, that's there too. Get around them like I do an almond croissant on a Saturday morning. 
That is so poetic. Yeah. You've I done like well. It. You've done well, kid. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Shout out to Gerardo, Spence, and the stats guy behind the cameras. Anyway, that's it. We'll catch you next week for the round one wrap up. Just remember, footy's back. Footy's back. Footy's <laughs> back.